and I made this. Have you seen those big, chunky blankets that seem to be all over Pinterest? Well, the more I saw them, the more I wanted one. So, I bought a bunch of yarn. I just bought this acrylic yarn from Michaels. Most of these blankets are made out of wool, but I didn't want to invest that much, because we have cats. I was gonna do the knitting with two strands of yarn instead of one, so I gathered them all together and I rolled them into this huge ball of yarn, fit for a tiger. I wasn't sure how to join the ends of one skein to another, so I just kind of tied them in a knot. Maybe it wasn't the best way to do it. Maybe I can sew them together so they're less bulky. I don't know. Doesn't really matter now. The internet consensus seems to be you can make one of these blankets in about an hour, so I figured I'd try to time it and see how long it really takes. Okay, so I didn't time this part since I thought it might take a while to figure out how to get started. I used to knit a lot but this yarn was so chunky and I didn't even know where to start. And I wasn't using needles, so I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Turns out casting on wasn't so hard. It was just a bunch of slip knots. You start with one slip knot, then pull a loop through over and over until you get the length you want. I wanted to make a blanket large enough to nestle in, so I wanted to go about 50 by 60 inches. Heading back the other direction for the first row was a little more complicated. You have to find the right hole and pull a loop through leaving a loop. Okay, now the first row's done, so let's set that timer. First thing I noticed while working on this was that that big ball of yarn was kind of annoying moving it from one side to another. It was like, make three stitches, unroll some yarn, over and over. Actually, come to think about it, it was kind of like using a typewriter. Second thing I noticed was keeping those stitch loops the same size was really hard. I guess since I didn't have a needle to keep the size consistent, if I ever make one of these again, I'd probably be really careful to keep the loops the same size somehow, probably with a ruler or something, and really take my time. But I was going for speed here, and I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. I did learn pretty fast that I wasn't gonna have enough yarn to finish my blanket. I ordered nine skeins to start with, thinking it'd be enough. Now let's do some math here. Two strands of yarn, nine skeins. Obviously my math was a little off. Now we've already established that I was trying to make this blanket on the cheap. These skeins retail at like 10 bucks a pop, and I got the first set three for one. Oh, that explains the nine. Don't feel quite so dumb now. And I sure as heck wasn't gonna pay full price for 11 more. That's 110 bucks. So I needed to wait for a sale. So I measured how much eight skeins got me, around 25 inches, and did some math. I wanted about 60 inches minus 25, which equals 35-ish inches left. Eight equals 25, about half of that is 10, which is four skeins, which equals 12. I had one extra skein, so 11. Pretty sure that's right, ish. So I tied a piece of yarn through the loop so they wouldn't pull out while I waited for more yarn. Let's put this away until later. Yay, 11 skeins, and they were half price. Time to roll these babies up into an even bigger ball of yarn. And here's a cat for scale. Okay, start the timing part two. Don't worry, I screenshotted the previous time so we can add it all up at the end. This is really just more the same of what you saw before. Loops upon loops upon loops. Meanwhile, my arm's getting more and more tired. I started having some trouble as it got longer though, so I had to start weighing it down on the table so it didn't just slide off. Once I finally got to the end of my gigantic ball of yarn, it was finally time to cast off. Casting off is pretty easy. It's just putting one loop inside another loop, then dropping the previous loop. Basically a reverse cast on. And time, sorta. When I started looking at the blanket when it was done, I noticed I dropped a stitch about a third of the way down, which meant I'd have to rip it out and do it over again. But I kept that timer going because that only seems fair. 
Not sure exactly how this will work on a large scale blanket, but I needed to weave in those pesky ends, which is just kind of looping them inside the other stitches. Hopefully they stay tucked in. Okay, so 57 minutes plus two hours and three minutes means it took about three hours to make, which in craft time ain't too shabby. I will say there's a few downsides here. Even with the sail yarn that wasn't very high quality, it still sent me back around a hundred bucks. Plus, this yarn sheds like crazy, so there's no just throwing it in the washer machine. Okay, so I probably made it a little bit too big, and that means I have no clue what to do with it. The cats will probably ruin it if I leave it anywhere within paw's reach. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Looks like all those Pinterest pictures. What I didn't realize, it was going to be so freaking heavy. It's 14 pounds. It's basically a weighted blanket. A very stylish weighted blanket. So I know you're asking, will I make another one? Well, not likely. I think there's only room for one giant chunky blanket in this household. If you like this video and want to see more things made by me, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching. See you on the flip side. Bye. That's really squishy.